Dear Diary, today I take the next step, the next step in being an ADHD life coach at Indigo Hub. I can't believe it's happening. I want to build, create and discover a place for us to truly be ourselves. I think this journey will be... Shh, the Indigo Diaries. Dear Diary, welcome wild to the Indigo Diaries and welcome to our exciting new series, Series 3, The World Through Our Eyes, with me, your host, Tasha Hickman. The Indigo Dies is a podcast for those who want to learn about ADHD through others' experience. So I'm back and I'm so excited. I've had a few episodes of Series 1 come out recently and I've been I've been very off the grid with running a full-time job and running a part-time business. So I do apologise, I've been away for a while, but I'm really excited to be back And in about six weeks, five weeks, my full-time job goes. So I'm going to be bringing this back every week. But I'm so grateful and I'm so excited because I got so many interesting people for Series 1 and I cannot wait to get started and really, really reach out with people's stories. And I'm so excited. And all I have to say is happy Let's Celebrate is ADHD Awareness Month and and I'm back this month and I'm very excited. So let's get started. So this week will be the first of my one, which is pick the brain session. Questions from audience or clients or people around where I'll bring experts to discuss. However, for the first time, it's just me. So, and I just want you to know that um, I've been looking and listening around the ADHD communities and questions that keep coming up. And I wanted to discuss this in our first theme. And I've come up with kind of a little theme for this theme. And the theme is a diagnosis, getting a diagnosis. So please note that I am an ADHD coach. I'm not a therapist or professional. So I'll be talking about this at my own expertise and my own personal experience, not as a professional. If you feel like you need more help, then go and get seek a professional help. So the first question that I got asked is, how do I get a diagnosis when the wait is so long? And I was like, wow. Uh, where do I start? So in every country, it's very, very different, you know, seeking out other avenues. And and then it's, you know, that question of how long are you willing to wait? You know, especially if you think that you have ADHD, having to wait, like I know that in the UK, that sometimes the wait can be up to, I know someone that had to wait five years, like how are you meant to wait five years for a diagnosis that that could or could not be true and a part of who you are. And when you learn that, you get so much from that and then you can move forward, right? So you're meant to just sit in limbo for five years, especially when we're adults and it becomes so late. And my question to you is how long are you willing to wait? I can't give you advice on how to get a diagnosis or where to go because everywhere in the world is so so different I can tell in the UK I can tell you if you live in Malaysia but every country is so true but my question to you is how long are you willing to wait how long are you willing to wait for that diagnosis if you're not willing to wait two years then go and find someone else go and find private it is expensive if you go private anywhere in the world but it might be worth it if you can't wait that long and I know that I couldn't wait I found out in two weeks and that was long enough. And then I got re-diagnosed three months later because I didn't like my first diagnosis. So, and that was hard. And I had to wait six weeks for that report. And that was like, oh, come on. How long are you willing to wait? Reach out to groups, to things, go online, do your research, go find other avenues if you're not happy. Next question is, what do I do after the diagnosis? And I was like, wow. What do I do after a diagnosis? There's no right or wrong answer what you do after a diagnosis. It's not like you get the diagnosis and then boom, 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 boom. This is what you do, a list of things to do. I could give you a list. I could give you my list. But that's not going to be your list. What you do after a diagnosis is up to you. When you have that information that you have ADHD, the rest is up to you. You could get advice from doctors. You can educate yourself. You could seek out and look at, you know, communities. You could go and, you know, get therapy, go and get a coach, listen to podcasts. There's so many different things that you can do. But my thing to you is, what do I do after the diagnosis? 
Do what you want to do, especially if you waited so long. Do what you want to do. Do what feels right to you. Do the research if you want. If you want to ignore it, ignore it. If you want to get help and go to a coach, come and find us. We're here. What do I do after the diagnosis is up to you. You are in control of what you are going to do with that information. But don't do it alone. Go and get advice. Seek out help. Because especially after a diagnosis, you can feel alone. I know I did. But don't do it by yourself. That's the only advice I'm going to say is don't do it alone. You are not alone. We are here. You just have to find us. And join us after the break where we're going to go into a few more and it, we're going to go in a bit, of, a bit more detail about this. And we're out. If you would like any more information on Indigo Hub or our Indigo support group, then please check out our website below or our link to our social media platforms or email at indigohub.adhd at gmail.com. If you would like to offer any comments, feedback, get support, or if you're interested in the world hearing your story, then please reach out through any of our avenues. As said before, have a positive week. Check in again later. And we're out. Shh, the Indigo Diaries. We're back. And before we were talking about a diagnosis and the, the theme of this Pick My Brain session is getting a diagnosis. And we were talking about kind of what, like how long are you willing to wait for a diagnosis and then what to do after it. And then this is a question that I got quite a few. How do I seek help in my community? So in a community that you live, how do I get help? How do I seek help? Where do I go? And I was like, well, every community is very different, right? You know, all around the world is very, very different. But the best place is just to go is find that your local place, because there are many charities online and many things, but it it doesn't help if it's not it's not available in your area. I mean, you can if you if you're willing to go online. There's so much, but find charities find support groups with people around you if you're if you live in a place where that's not available then they're online you know the pandemic has been horrendous but it's brought so much online there are so many support groups including my own hey <laughs> so many charities in the in adhd uk addis you know ada chad all these different places there you can go and find information And then if you want it in your local area, go online, go on Facebook, speak to people, speak to your doctor, speak to all these people. So you're not alone. Like I said, in the first half, you're not alone. Go and find people. And that's finding them in your community. The next one I found quite a difficult one to answer. How do I manage after a diagnosis with all the lost time? I hear it so many times, and I know I did it myself when I was diagnosed. I've been diagnosed. I was diagnosed at 27, and you think, wow, that's late, but that's really early. When we hear so many people getting diagnosed at 60, 70, 40s, 30s, and I was diagnosed at 27, and that's quite early when I speak to adults. And well, what am I meant to do now? What about all that years, all the years I struggled, all the years at school, all the years where I felt like this, all these years? That's okay if you feel like that. If you've been diagnosed and you think, wow, what a childhood I could have had, what struggles I wouldn't have had, it's okay. You can grieve for the life that you could have had. When I think about this, I think about the five stages of grief. Elizabeth Corbin Russ, and I posted it below. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. I went through this. I was diagnosed with ADHD. I felt relieved. And then I went into denial. Denial that, no, I I knew I had it. I didn't go in denial that I didn't have it. But I went in denial about doing anything about it. I was angry at the world, angry at my parents, angry. How did no one know this? 
all those years I struggled, all that time lost, bargaining, kind of thinking, hmm, is there another option? Is there another way? Depression, sad about the last time, sympathy, fear. It took me six months to get acceptance. And when I got to acceptance, I reached out to help and I got it. However you manage your last time is the way you lose, do it. Don't sit too long in that. Grieve for it. Go through the five stages of grief. Yeah, no, you might be thinking, yeah, but nobody died. Yeah, nobody died. But it's still grief. It's still a loss of time. And life's so short, right? Grieve for the life that you could have had. But then open your eyes and think, I have this now. What can I do with it? That's what I did. But that's a really good resource to look at. And I really like that. The last one is I can't afford the help after a diagnosis. So what's next? I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It's expensive. Coaching, therapy. If you go private, it's expensive. Or if you go through a government program, there's a long wait. It's never very, very easy. It should be, but it's not. There's still a lack of awareness, a lack of knowledge, and a lack of compassion for having ADHD. For instance, I am going back to the UK, and I've started looking at getting ADHD meds. And I've looked at going, getting private insurance that nowhere covers ADHD. Really? <laughs> nowhere covers ADHD? Cover a diagnosis, but then nothing after that oh, what help is that? <laughs> you know, you have the diagnosis, but nothing else, really. It's expensive and it is hard, but there are so many avenues to go down and people out there. There are things like ADA. It's like $5 a month and all the groups that you get. There's free groups like Indigo. There's free charities that do events, do things, do little things. There are so many coaches that have so many different variety of packages have group coaching to make it cheaper, have cheaper, have payment tiering, like tier payments for different things. You know, group workshops, support groups, going on a waiting list. There are so many avenues and people out there. You've just got to put in the time to be able to find them. And I, I wish I could say it was easier honestly I wish it was I wish that we got a diagnosis and then it was like hello here is your help because guess what after years and years of waiting we well deserve that but it isn't easy but you deserve the right to get the help to make it affordable and to get the life that you deserve and I really 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 hope that you do that and you give yourself that and I hope today I gave you some sort of answers or awareness or just some hope. My encouragement for today is this. The first step to receiving an answer is being brave enough to ask a question. To get an answer, sometimes you do need to reach out. And that's okay. Why not, hey? What have we got to lose? And that's kind of the end of my first Pit My Brain session. And if you ever have a question or anything, I now have a new feature of my website, which is completely free. It's a Pick My Brain session, basically chat. And anyone can ask a question at any time and get an answer within 48 hours. And sometimes I now have it linked up to my phone. So some hours a day, I'm actually on there live. So it can be a live chat. And I'm always happy to speak to people, ask questions, anything. If you feel alone and you want to know an answer, I'm a resource. Go on my website. No strings attached. There's a chat box at the bottom. Pick my brain. Ask a question. I will get back to you. Because I know what it's like to be there after a diagnosis and not know what the hell to do. 
let's make it easier for us, especially in ADHD Awareness Month. But to be honest, 365 days a year. Join us next week as I'll be having a new Series 1 podcast guest with a special new guest that I'm really, really excited about. And expect loads more this year because I've got like six lined up, so expect more. And Series 3 will be coming back with a short top eye session. And really looking forward to that. So if you're interested in coming back, as a guest, you want to pick my brain, have questions, dilemmas, or want to share your experience that you want advice on, or you want the world to hear your story in Series 1, please reach out through our social media avenues and email, always below, on my website, all there. I hope that you come back, you learn, listen, and experience the world through not my eyes, our eyes. Why not? Have an amazing October, everybody. And we're out. Dear Diary, as Indigo Hub's process goes on, it makes me stop and wonder, could there be more for us, more light, more experience and more ways to see the world through our own eyes. I think this journey will be 